In August 1971, a woman living in Belmez, Spain, noticed a strange stain on her kitchen floor. Despite numerous attempts of cleaning the stain, it would not go away. And then, a few days later, she noticed that the stain began forming into what appeared to be a human-looking face. The appearance of this and other faces in this house would become known as the Belmez faces. Belmez is a small mountain village in Spain. It's the home of a small farming family. They were a family like any other until something strange happened. On the 23rd of August 1971, Mrs. Maria Gomez Perea noticed a dark stain that was forming on her kitchen floor, even though nothing had been spilled onto the floor that could have caused the stain. She tried scrubbing the floor, but the stain would not go away. After a few days, this stain began morphing into what looked like a face. And even stranger than that, this face seemed to change positions. No matter how much Maria tried scrubbing the floor, the face remained. Eventually, she gave up and asked her husband and her son for help. Her husband decided that the best solution was to destroy the floor with the image with a pickaxe and then replace the floor with fresh concrete, which is exactly what he did. For about a week, things appeared to have gone back to normal. But then, a new face appeared. And it wasn't the only face. Soon, more and more faces began appearing all over the house. Word of these strange faces quickly spread, and soon the entire town knew about it. This led to people flocking to the house because everyone wanted to see this strange phenomenon for themselves. Word would also reach the town's mayor, who intervened and forbade the family to destroy the floor any further. Instead, the floor concrete was cut out and sent for study. The news of this strange phenomenon would soon spread beyond the small town, and this drew parapsychology experts to the town. And scientists would also show up to verify the authenticity of the faces and test whether or not they were paintings or something else that Maria or anyone else in the family had created. The kitchen where the faces first appeared were closed off under the supervision of a notary. Samples of concrete were sent to the ICV for study. The ICV could not find any evidence of any pigment, dyes or paint that could have been used. Though, it's unclear which face they analyzed or what kind of mineralogical or chemical analysis that they performed. It should be noted that in the samples that they tested, zinc, lead and chromium were found. The floor of the house was torn out several times, but the faces would return every single time it was restored. They tried scrubbing the images with detergent, but they still didn't go away. Allegedly, the only thing that the detergent did was cause the faces to change expression, with the eyes widening. Finally, the room would be sealed off, a process that was supposedly filmed by a German television crew. Their kitchen was left alone for three months, completely sealed off with no one being able to enter it. When they returned to unseal the kitchen, they noticed that not only were the faces still there, but they had moved and evolved. And in case you're wondering, during the time the kitchen was sealed, they had made a makeshift kitchen in another area of the house for the family to use. It wouldn't take long for theories to formulate about these faces. Many of the theories were paranormal. 
The main researchers of this case were the German lecturer of parapsychology, Hans Bender, and Professor German de Agamossa. Neither of these men would publish an official report on these faces, though they did conduct a lot of research on them. Supposedly, Bender would declare this phenomenon the most important paranormal occurrence in the 20th century and Argumosa used to be the main defender of this case in Spain. He supposedly made several EVP recordings of sounds from within the house, which supposedly included the voice of a child and sounded like a mixture of hell and a brothel. He also allegedly found documents about a 17th century murder where a governor of Granada had murdered five members of a local family. It's unclear where this took place, but the theory is that the house was either built on the site or near the site. Another theory that follows that same theme says that since the house is so close to a church, it's possible that it was built on the site of an ancient cemetery. In fact, there are reports that say that human remains were found several feet below the floor of the house, many of which supposedly were skeletons with no heads. And supposedly, many of these were skeletons that had no heads and were approximately 700 years old. According to these reports, there were also bodies found under the neighbors' houses, though none of these houses have ever reported anything strange. After finding these remains, they were removed and given a proper burial. And after that, most people believed that that would be the end of these strange faces, but only two weeks after these bodies were buried, new faces would appear. The third theory I'm going to mention involves the lady of the house, Maria. She had allegedly cited herself as having psychic powers and this led to a theory that she's the one who produced the images, though not by using paint, but rather by something that is called thoughtography, which is the supposed ability to burn images from the mind onto surfaces by psychic means. There are plenty of rumors regarding this case, and according to some rumors, the faces would change expressions and color depending on Maria's mood. Maria passed away in February 2004 at the age of 85, but the faces allegedly still remain in the house. There are, of course, those who say that this is nothing but a hoax. A big hoax for financial gain. And the biggest argument is that someone in the family put the faces there. Some skeptics even say that the faces are not exactly drawn well, and that means that it's a hoax. As I mentioned earlier, tests have been performed on some of the faces which supposedly showed that the faces weren't put there using paint. But as I mentioned, these tests did show that zinc, lead and chromium were all present in the samples. In an article published in July 1993, it was noted that the presence of zinc, lead and chromium cannot be ignored. According to the article, the presence of lead means that you cannot rule out the possibility of paint being used in the making of the faces. And this is because for many years, lead was the most used pigment in making the primary colors. And the cheapest primary colors are enamels that contain lead, which are widely used in the home and are very easy to apply. The article says that despite the conclusion that the ICV had, it doesn't actually prove that paint wasn't used. The faces being painted on is the biggest argument against this story. And in Spain, other parapsychologists have maintained the hypothesis that this was a forgery. 
The president of the Spanish Society of Parapsychology, Ramos Pereira, stated that La Pava, the name that was given to the first of the Belmas faces, had coloration. And using infrared photography, he was supposedly able to see that the face had added pigmentation over the original appearance. And supposedly, he even detected the presence of paintbrush bristles, which led him to conclude that the face had been painted and then someone had touched up the face when it had begun to fade. Other skeptics believe that if paint wasn't used, then the most likely explanation for the faces could be the use of an oxidizing chemical agent, or the use of agents that are sensitive to light, such as silver nitrate, which darkens when subjected to ultraviolet sunlight. In 2014, Cuarto Milenio, a Spanish investigative journalism show, would carry out a technical analysis of the faces. This was done with the intention of discovering a possible hoax. After receiving permission from the house owners, they extracted samples from the faces and analyzed them. They concluded that the images were not made with paint, and they didn't find any external manipulations or elements in the faces. They then tried to reproduce similar images through a variety of methods that was considered valid in previous investigations, which included hydrochloric acid and silver nitrate. But this attempt was a failure and everyone on the show was left perplexed by these faces. The Belmas faces have been a persistent mystery since they first appeared in 1971. The images are supposedly still present in the house, though they are slowly fading and have become a bit of a tourist attraction. The only thing I know for certain is that whether these faces are painted or paranormal, they are really creepy looking. <laughs> 